everybody is out shopping and, and the workers have to work. And some of the workers wish they could get the day off either today or tomorrow. So these two factory workers was having a conversation. And they're saying that the boss is so hard, we keep asking him for the day off, we want to be with our family, and so on. So the woman says to her other friend, I want you to know I can make the boss give me a day off today. The man said, well, how, how are you going to do that? She said, just wait and see, just wait and see. When the boss comes, you just wait and see. I'm going to get the day off. So the man was very inquisitive about that. So when she see the boss coming, she got a ladder and she climbed up on the ceiling and she hold on upside down from the ceiling. The boss comes in and says, what are you doing, woman? She says, I'm a light bulb. <laughs> boss says, what are you doing? He says, I am a light bulb. The boss says, I guess you have been working too much that you've gone crazy. I think you need to take the day off. <laughs> so after she will leave him because she got the day off because the boss thinks that she's crazy. The man who she was having a conversation started to follow her out, and the boss says, where are you going? The man says, well, I'm going home too. I can't walk in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Listen to the Bible, to the book of Luke chapter 2. Brother Wendell and, and, uh, and Brother Clyde, sorry we didn't have the competition, uh, didn't follow through the competition. Next year. <laughs> you have Minister Rani there, he's good to you, know, very good. <laughs> All right, Luke chapter 2, I want to read from verse 41, if you have it, will you go to verse 41? Chapter 2, verse 41 of the book of St. Luke. When you have it, would you say amen? I'm going to read on quickly because of time. And the Bible says in verse 41, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, meaning Jesus, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey. And they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou hast dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wish you not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them, and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. Verse 52. And Jesus increased in the wisdom and the stature and the favor with God and men. I want to thank God for his word today. Well, this passage don't really deal with the essence of what the true Christmas story is all about. But I want to glean a truth from this passage of Scripture this morning. And I have to ask the question, have you ever missed something that really matters? Have you ever really missed something that really matters in your life? I don't know there, if there's a technical term for the dynamics this morning where we miss something significant because we are too busy focusing on something else or be distracted by things that need to be to get done how many know what I'm talking about you have something important to do but something distract you from doing it 
But it sure seems when we understand this question in the context of the scripture this morning, it seems like likely that this was happening at the time. And even if we read from the beginning of this passage, you will see that this was also happening on the night before the first Christmas. This Christmas story begins in Luke chapter 2 and verse 1 to 3. And it says, in those days, Caesar Augustus issues a decree that, that a censor should be taken out of the Roman world. And this was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And the Bible tells us that everyone went, everyone went to their own town to register. And this census would have, have made things incredibly chaotic at that time. Because people had to leave wherever they are and go to their place of birth so that it could be registered. And the small town of Bethlehem would have become extremely busy as people made the journey back to their hometown. It was so busy in that time that Luke tells us that there was no guest room available for Mary and Joseph. And so they must have ended up staying in an area that was typically occupied by livestock. Because when Jesus was born, the Bible tells us that he was placed in a feeding trough. In other words, what we call a manger today. Talking about missing what matters this morning. Everyone in Bethlehem seemed oblivious to this young woman named Mary who about to give birth to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. With everyone so busy, it is interesting this morning to see who received the announcement of Christ's birth. Luke tells us in verse 8 of chapter 2 and verse 18, it tells us about angels appearing to shepherd outside of Bethlehem with the good news of the birth of Jesus. The people of Bethlehem missed it. In the middle of their busy time, being reunited with friends, being reunited with family, scrambling around to find a place to stay, they missed it. The most important advent that will turn the tides of history. When we also look at the movie, for those of you who have watched the Grinch movie, the people in Hoosville, they didn't miss Christmas, but there are people all over the world who miss Christmas because they do not recognize the birth of a Savior. Even today in the society that we live in, there are a lot of people who are missing Christmas. Not that it might seem like it would be hard to miss it, especially in this country. In every place that you turn, you walk around Jamaica, you go to every avenue possible, the malls. There's tons of advertising going on, what you need to buy for Christmas. Some new gadget, something is out there telling you about the special prize that they have for the Christmas season. It's also not just the advertising either. There are the lights, and there's some nice lights. Some nice Christmas trees. Snow, hopefully tomorrow. Most of all, there's a lot of parties, events taking place. So here in America, very few people miss the Christmas celebration. But many will miss Christmas. And I want to talk to you based on this this morning. Because even many Christians will miss the real reason for the season. For those of us who know Christ this morning, Christmas becomes a time to focus on the reality of the incarnation that God became man. That's an incredible divine act that brought God into human history. We all know this for those who are, are saved and have been um, saved for a period of time. We have heard it all before, even in church or in Christian radio or even read in Christian publication about the true reason for the season. But even still, if we are not careful as a people, because of everything that is happening around us, we can still miss Christmas. Are you hearing me this morning? And so today I want to look 
back in time at those who were actually there in Bethlehem. We want again on understanding this one before we leave here to go to our families and go wherever we have to plan for this Christmas holiday. We want to leave here understanding how someone can miss Christmas. Somehow, with all the commotions that is going on, people have missed the essence of what Christmas is all is really about. They miss the joy. They miss the hope and the satisfaction that it brought. Because I want you to know when that angel appeared to Mary and said, Mary, I want you to know you will be conceived of the Holy Ghost and you shall bring forth a son. And his name shall be called Emmanuel. Meaning God is with us. That is the greatest event in the world was underway when the coming of the Savior. And these people missed it. I said they missed it. We can look at the scripture and we, could, we can go through it where find it come and you would see in this greatest event, there were people in that time missed it because of the busy schedule. I want to talk to you about on a subject, if I were to say don't forget Jesus this Christmas. For those of us who is truly to the bone, we have heard songs like, put Jesus back in your Christmas. Because Christmas has become so commercialized. It has been about the ham, the duck, the manish water, the goat, the lights, the Christmas trees, the shopping, the, the events. The fruit cake, the black cake. So many things that can cause us to miss the true reason for the season. We may get too busy and stressed out that we forget the true meaning of Christmas, and that is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Are you hearing me this morning? So as we have read in Luke chapter 2, and we read the story of when Mary and Joseph lost Jesus. You can say maybe they have parenting problems because to lose your child and then understand he's not with you. And for a couple days he went missing. Maybe they had parenting problems. Maybe not. Maybe they get occupied or focused or distracted by something else. They were given the Son of God to look after. But they lost him. It took them four days. Somebody said four days. Could you imagine if you had lost one of your child in the mall? Or you're walking on the street and you miss them because you saw something for a good price. And they let go of your child's hand and all of a sudden, he or she disappeared. Four days it took before they found him. And where they found him, they found him in the temple. And what he was doing fascinates them. I want you to know this one. Did you know it is possible this morning to lose God at Christmas? It is possible to lose the, the true essence of what Christmas is really all about. And so Christmas is one of the busiest time of the year. And as time goes by, it becomes much more easy to think of it less as a joyful celebration of God's greatest gift to humankind and more a time of physical and financial stress. Because you have more nephews and nieces to buy gifts for. You have more people in your inner circle that you want to buy a gift for. You want to do shopping. You want to fix your home. You have all parties. All those gifts, all baking and decoration can make us so busy and stressed that we forget the true meaning of Christmas. Are you following me this morning? I remember when Jaden was a little younger, when I take him to the mall, and we go to the mall, especially if we get a time to go 
in the season shopping. When I'm with my grandson, I have to keep my eyes on him all the time. Because he does not necessarily have his eyes on me. And it's easy to quickly lose sight of him even in a store. Because he will choose to play hide and seek in the store. And how many know that can be frightening? But sometimes we lose sight of God. And during Christmas, we can easily do that. But here's the good news. This morning, we might lose sight of God, but God never loses sight of us. Are you hearing me this morning? When the Bible says that his name shall be called Emmanuel, it means God is with us. He's always watching you. Are you hearing me? That's why you got to understand, even if nobody is looking at you, God is looking at you. His eyes is always on you. He's always caring for you this morning. Even when you have lost sight of him, God still cares about you. Remember this morning during this festive season that God is the true reason for the season. Amen. It's not about the vodka, it's not about the beers, the punch of creme, the ham in the oven, the, the fruit cake. There are a lot of people who are missing the true reason for the season because they have to get this stuff. They have to make sure they get the curtains up and, and the new scent of paint. And they miss the true essence of what Christmas is really all about. The incarnation is an amazing thing to contemplate this morning. Because just think the almighty creator of all things was un, with unlimited strength and power. Choose to depend on a mother for his nourishment and nurture. How would you think about that? How many know Christmas has a personal promise for you and I? It's a personal promise uh, from, from God to mankind. And let me establish this this morning because the significance of this special day is embodied in two scriptural names. When you read the first chapter of Matthew, an angel of the Lord told Joseph and Mary, who was his fiancée, would bear a son and conceive of the Holy Spirit. And he instructed Joseph to name the child Jesus. He also announced that the birth will fulfill Isaiah prophecy. And, and when we read the book of Isaiah, it tells us in chapter 7 verse 14, it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And this name has been translated to mean God is with us. Let us examine the two names this morning so we have a true understanding of what Christmas means to us. The two names are Jesus and Emmanuel. The name Jesus is translated in the Old Testament word Joshua, meaning the Lord is salvation. And when the angel said, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. I want you to know the Bible tells us in Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's no one that have never sinned. If we say that we have sinned, we have made him a liar. And so we have sinned. And we cannot save ourselves this morning. That's why God demonstrated his love towards us. Because man cannot save himself. He gave man, amen, through the, the, the sacrificial system. And put things in place so that man could go to the high priest and they would carry an animal. That would without blemish, without spot and wrinkle. And they would sacrifice that animal and confess their sin on that animal head. But the blood of the animal could only cover their sin. It couldn't wash it away. And yet still, even in the sacrificial system, man's heart was polluted. Because instead of giving God what he asked for, they were bringing all type of sick animals. And so God, his plan had to be unveiled because the Bible tells us from the very beginning of the foundation of the world, Christ was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And it was such a time... That in the right moment of time, God sent his son Jesus. So that he could be born, and he was born to die. The reason for that is to save us from our sins this morning. 
He was appointed to the significance of that original Christmas. God provided a solution for your sins and my sins, as well as for the sins of the entire world, whether it be past, present, and future. How many thankful for that this morning? 700 years before Christ's birth, Isaiah prophecy or prophesy was your word of hope and encouragement to Judah as it faced its greatest crisis. The prophet message was an indication of what God was about to do then as well as what he would ultimately I mean, be fulfilling the Messiah advent this morning. Emmanuel, how many glad that God is with us? A name full of promise. It was God's way of assuring the Old Testament saints at that time that he was with them. I mean, it's comforting to know that I'm not all alone this morning, that God is with me. Sometimes we may have people around us, but we are lonely. But when you're a child of God, you have the presence of God with you this morning. Emmanuel, God is with us this morning. And so taken together, these two names means or encompasses what we need for our entire life this morning. Jesus, the partner of sin. How many thankful for Jesus? Because without Jesus, there will be no forgiveness of sin. How many can lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you for sending us on Jesus to die that my sins can be forgiven. So he's a partner of sin. And also, he's Emmanuel, the divine presence within us to help and guide every moment of every day. I remember telling a person just a few days ago, I remember when I was growing up, amen, one of the songs my mother used to play every morning, amen, beside the Jim Reeves song, one of the songs was, one day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you, to give me the strength that I, and you know the rest. But that song was important. Because to understand that we need Jesus each and every day. I don't know about you, but I cannot live my life and live in victory without Jesus each day of my life. Because the devil has things planned. I mean, the world has things planned to take you down. So we need Jesus each and every day. So not only Jesus is the pattern of sin, but he's the one that gives us the strength. His presence is with us to help us each and every day. How many can say thank you, Jesus? The names and the promises in them are the foundation for every facet of the Christian life. So how did God engineer that first Christmas to fulfill the promise of Jesus and Emmanuel? His method was incarnation. And one night Christ was born, the eternal God motivated by love entered the human family. He was supernaturally conceived by the Holy Spirit and physically born of a virgin. I want you to know Jesus never ceased to be God. And he remained perfectly sinless in his being. Are you hearing me? He was 100% human and he was 100% God. But he lived on the earth to show mankind that we could live a victorious life. Jesus showed us how, what we need to do in order to live victorious because he spent time with his father. He keeps sweet communion with his father. If the, if the incarnation hadn't taken place exactly as it did as the scripture says, then we would still be living in our sin. There will be no hope for you and I. I mean, I am thankful this morning that he have washed away my sins. According to the scripture, the punishment for our sin is death. Romans 6, 6 and 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life to Christ our Lord. The Bible also says that God rejects any imperfect sacrifice. As you read in Deuteronomy chapter 17 verse 1, he says, Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or any evil, for that is an abomination unto the Lord. Are you following me this morning? So there had to be a perfect sacrifice to offer for mankind's sin. And that sacrifice was Jesus. Because at the River Jordan, John the Baptist seeing Jesus coming from afar, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. 
He was the perfect sacrifice. Jesus, because of his absolute sinlessness, is the only one who can save us by offering himself as a payment for our sin debt. Because if you sin, the wages of your sin is debt. So apart from the birth of God we have seen in human flesh, every one of us would have to stand before God with all our sins resting upon us and our sins would separate us from God. So I want you to know it is not about just the, all the niceties and the festivities that we enjoy so much. But the understand the true essence of Christmas of Jesus didn't come and die. If you're born in a manger and die on the cross, when you die and I die and we all die, we would spend a crisis eternity, are you hearing me, in the lakes of fire. Isaiah says in chapter 59 of verse, and verse 2, it says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So I want you to know this morning, we all have sinned. And so the incarnation is the promise of Jesus. The Lord is salvation for every person in this world. And that's why we read in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. How many thankful for that? But that was not the full extent of God awesome plan. He also promised us his presence, which was fulfilled in the birth of Emmanuel. Jesus was God with us. The incarnate deity who physically lived and walked among men to show us what the heavenly father is like. Because he says, if you see me, you see the father. Are you hearing me? Before his crucifixion, Jesus encouraged his disciples with the promise of God's indwelling presence. So he said, in one passage of scripture, he says, it is mandatory, it is a must, it is paramount that I go. And if I go, amen, then I'll send the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. And we know, as the scripture says, that the, our body becomes the temple of God, that the Holy Spirit could come and reside in our temple. Are you with me, somebody? Christ said that when he went away, he would ask the Father to send the Spirit of truth who will abide with you and will be in you. So for what? To teach us, to remind us, to comfort us, to guide every step of the way this morning. How many thank God for the Holy Spirit this morning? That you, you don't have to live your life isolated. There's apparently the Holy Spirit that is with you to empower you to live a victorious life. For better than God simply being with me, is God within me, for me, and through me this morning. That's why I can say, like Paul says in Galatians, amen. In him I live and move and have my being this morning. How many in, in him you live and move and have your being this morning? Because why? Emmanuel, his presence is with us. And that is the promise to every generation of believers this morning. The incomparable, the supernatural, immeasurable God will take up resident inside us and be everything that we need. And if you feel empty this morning, you need God to come in, in you. Are you hear me this morning? Once he lived within you, there will never be a time that you have to walk without him. Because he promised never to leave you nor forsake you this morning. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he had said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's a promise that God has made for the believers this morning. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So even in the time like this, where some are feeling discouraged and despair and dismay. I want you to know this morning that he is with you this morning. In the psalmist, David said that he's a present help in the time of trouble this morning. How many thankful that God will be with you even through this Christmas season. As we come into the dawning of a new year, 
I want you to know this morning that we don't have to, amen, be fearful this morning, but all we got to be thankful that we have God who will be with us, amen. He's already in 2018 this morning, and he understand, amen, what your story or the chapter of your life is going to be. So let's praise him while we have time. Are you hearing me? The true reason for the season is Jesus. In light of this wonderful promise of God's redemption and presence, believers should be confident and courageous this morning. Tell your neighbors, be confident and courageous. We don't have a single need that he cannot satisfy. How can we worry when the sovereign almighty God is with us this morning? So as we gather, as you gather on Christmas morning, I encourage you and your family to give thanks to your almighty God. Are you hearing me this morning? Yes, it's good to get up and open the gifts together. But spend time, amen, together and worship God. And give God praise and thank God, amen, for sending Jesus. Because he's the reason of the season that my sins can be forgiven. And I have, amen, the presence of God abiding in me each and every day of my life this morning. The incarnation is the very essence of Christmas. There's nothing wrong with the gifts and all the festivities as long as it's pure. Are you hearing me? Because some people's festivities can be out of this world. Are you hearing me? As long as these things do not crowd out what belongs in the first place. I, God is about to break into humanity, shattering time and becoming life and hope to help all mankind this morning. He was deity in diapers. That's mind-blowing. Could you imagine that? How you and I, how we spend our time is based on choices. Like victims this morning, we can claim to be too busy that we just don't have time for the spiritual thing. But we must choose to make time for the important things in life. And such is, such as Christmas, some people, they, they want to debate through that we as Christians should not celebrate Christmas because it's a pagan celebration. I want you to know this morning we're not celebrating as a pagan should celebrate. And I want you to know if we celebrate like the pagan, we miss the real essence, the reason for, for the Christmas celebration. The Christmas celebration is I'm going to thank God that he sent Jesus. I was dead in my trespasses and sin, but he sent Jesus to born and die, amen, that I may have life and have it more abundantly this morning. So it's important to make time for the important things of life. I remember Jesus having a conversation with some of his friends, and Jesus told matter. Dear matter, you are worried and upset over all these details. Could you imagine, take that episode just like they had the play, and you're busy, amen, wanting to put up the curtain and the trees and get in the right decoration, because when you're family and friends, you want their eyes to pop out and say, look how beautiful your home is. And miss the true essence of what the real Christmas is about. There's one thing worth being concerned about, Jesus told Matthew. And he says, Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. The important aspect of what true Christmas is all about. You and I, we can attend church every Sunday and still lose sight of Jesus. Are you hearing me this morning? Some of us, we in church because it's a customary thing. But we have lost sight of Jesus. It isn't God who is lost this morning. Many in the world today, there are people that is lost. God is not lost. Jesus said he came to seek that which is lost. When we look at the scripture that we have read, Mary and Joseph lost sight of Jesus and only realized it after time has passed. In the same way, when we lose sight of Jesus, it happened over a period of time. We don't just lose Jesus right away. That's why, amen, if I were to ask the question, have you lost Jesus? Have you lost your first love for God? Because if you lost your first love for God, you have lost Jesus in some way and form. Jesus told the church of Ephesus, 
You need to remember from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first work of your first love this morning. Are you hearing me this morning, church? We need, amen, to get back to our place to love Jesus with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our mind. How many of you say hallelujah to that this morning? Let me conclude this morning. The Bible tells us that, if we, that the way that we lose fellowship with Christ is through sin. Amos 3 and 3 says, Can two walk together unless they agree? Walking together with Christ is fellowship. Are you hearing me? It means going where he goes, doing what he's doing, being a fellow worker with him. Following Jesus. So we walk with Jesus in communion, have a common goal and common desire. But when we sin, we in essence have disagreed with God. Because Jesus isn't walking towards sin. Are you hearing me this morning? So when we sin, we in essence saying, I'm going to go my own way for a while, Jesus. And that is fellowship that is broken. Are you hearing me? You and I can enjoy the fellowship with Christ if we cannot enjoy it if we are sinning. If you are covering your sin, you can enjoy the fellowship. You might be saved. You might have that relationship with God as a son or daughter, but you're not in fellowship with him. Now, as we look at Mary and Joseph again, because there are lessons that we really need to hear this morning before we leave. They were in Ju Jerusalem, and they were celebrating the Passover. They are doing their religious duty. Hear me now. They were doing their religious duty. But at some point, they get caught up in the ritual, the duty aspect, and they lost Jesus. And how many times we are caught up with things that is not so important. And we lose the real emphasis or the real essence of what Christmas is all about. Look at the innkeeper. They didn't have a room. And not just not having a room to put them because of the busyness. But just the mere fact that you see a pregnant woman just about to give birth, you would have a heart of compassion. At least let me take her in my house. Are you hearing me? What's the essence of Christmas? Is it just to give somebody a gift? I believe that we got to share love. In order for that love, amen, to be true, we have to have connection with the one that is true love this morning. It probably, it just took one moment and they were distracted by something or focused on something other than Jesus and they lost him. So I want to ask you as I close, how much of your focus was Christ is for you during this season? Is your focus more on the gifts? Is it more on having the niceties or plan the festivities for family? How much is the focus is Christ than these other things? Let's be real this morning. Are you walking in fellowship with Christ? There's something that we need to understand this morning. That when they recognize that they lost Jesus, they did something about it. They went back to the place that they knew that he was with them. And that's interesting for you and I today. If we have lost Jesus and get caught up with all the activities, let's get back to the place that we was with him. Get back to the place where you had this love for him. Where worshiping him was the most important thing rather than the cooking, the baking, the dressing of the trees and so forth. It was a time of unity, a time of love. A time to embrace each other. A time to spend with each other. A time that was the... Uh, you see, when we talk about the, the good old days, I remember growing up. The good old days for me for Christmas would be a time 
And my grandmother, we would sing the carols and worship God together, but it also was a time of family and love. And sometimes it's just not your blood family. Sometimes even the people closest to you, just friends, become family. A time where we spend and love each other. They return back to the place that they lost. And I want you to know, let's get back to the place that we was with him. On this Christmas morning, let's get back to the place this morning. Don't let the crowd, listen to me this morning. The crowd will carry you away from Jesus. Because they were following the crowd. Look, read it. You will see Mary and Joseph follow the crowd. Young people, the crowd would not leave you to Jesus. The crowd will lead you away from Jesus. So don't follow the crowd. Don't follow how the world is celebrating. We as believers know how to celebrate Jesus. Because we know who the true reason for the season is nobody else but Jesus. It's not Santa Claus this morning. It's not his elves this morning. It's Jesus this morning. Are you hearing me? Would you stand to your feet and lift your hands this morning and say, Lord, I thank you this morning. How many get him back to the place that he once occupied in my heart this morning? Come on this morning. I would like this morning that we all leave this place, get it back to the place that we know we once visited him. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. And as we stand this morning, let us stand to worship the true reason for the season. And I'll ask you one more time. I'll ask you to lift your hands this morning. It doesn't matter if you fall away or if you missed it. They, they lost Jesus, but they went back looking for him. And they started back at the place they know they had him. And if you have lost, and you're feeling out of joy, out of sync, get back to the place that you once had with him. Amen this morning. I am guilty Ashamed of what I've done What I've become These hands are dirty Oh, you break my cord, yeah. 
of my dad just the very sad day I would to leave my home country to come to this country to do the Lord's will though my father has passed away many years I remember those words that he has said to me as he embraced me with tears in his eyes that he says on your journey that God has for you Understand that the most important things in life, love for God, love for family, and all your endeavors, make sure that you keep these things. Love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And if we love Him, we can love each other. As you bow your head this morning, I trust that today these words that I've shared will be meaningful in your spirit and your heart. That you spend the quality times with family and friends this morning. That you understand that the true essence of this season is Jesus. And to love each other. So as everyone bowed their heads and their heart this morning, Father, we may not have gold and frankincense and myrrh like the wise men who came from the east. But we bring before you a heart of worship, O oh God. And as we bow before you, O oh God, today, I pray, O oh Lord, let our worship come up to you as a sweet, sweet smell and savor. God, like the most expensive perfume. That God, that worship will change even the atmosphere, atmosphere around us. God, because there are people who are lonely. There are people who are sad. There are people who are frustrated. On this, on this time of celebration, many have lost their loved ones. Oh God, their hearts are broken and empty. God, many are discouraged. They can afford or get the things that they would love to give to their family member or loved one. But I pray today that we come to truly understand the true reason for the season. That Jesus came and died, born in a manger, and died on a cross. That we can be forgiven from all our sins today and be adopted into your family, O oh God. And have your presence with us each and every day. So as we live, we live in total victory. 
Father, touch every home represented, every life here today. May God, as you have declared to the angel of coast, peace on earth and goodwill 